Radio Algeria International presents International Policy Code, a weekly program hosted by Les Fermazari. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's re-election has sealed the fate of Palestinians who had placed hopes on the peace process and the support of the international community. After his re-election, he vowed that a Palestinian state would not be established. In reaction, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas said that achieving a two-state solution now appears impossible. Our guest in our program is David Hartwell, director and managing editor of Middle East Insider, and he's an independent political risk and international security consultant. David, welcome to our program. Thank you very much. The Israeli leader is offering no alternative. No, not at all. And I think he was... The statements that he came out with in the last days of the campaign were were so equivocal as to be really not leave an awful lot of room for doubt, even though he's tried to sort of clarify those statements since the election and sort of say, well, they weren't, um, he's been misunderstood or or something like that. I think, but really, you know, saying things like, you know, that the Palestinian state will not be established under my watch, those are the words he used. And that he will continue building um, settlements, Israeli settlements in East Jerusalem, have really been interpreted, certainly uh, by the uh, the U.S. administration of Barack Obama, uh, as really a definitive statement of, of policy uh, in the next um, for the next Netanyahu government. Now, it isn't quite as simple as that, because um, much will depend on. The, the coalition government that Netanyahu puts together. But, um, but most of the, the sort of centre-left parties have, have ruled out joining his coalition, so it very much looks like he's, it's going to be, a, a, at the very least, a centre-right, maybe even a hard-line right coalition. So really there doesn't appear to be an awful lot of room for manoeuvre in the future in terms of the peace process, unless you know, there, are, you know, there are major climb-downs or the U.S., exerts major influence and major pressure on the Israelis to come back to the negotiating table. David, do you think that Netanyahu's re-election plays directly into the hands of the Palestinian Authority? Um, It's difficult to say, really, because the Palestinian Authority is really in a very poor situation at the moment, both in terms of its economic position and its ability to pay wages. And those are really... Uh, hitting the, the Palestinians very, very hard at the moment. Um, it's not quite yet to say it's on the, on the brink of collapse, but on, from a financial point of view. Mm-hmm. But, um, but they are making noises about halting security cooperation with the Israelis, um, even before the election. And now they're really in a position where they don't have, as far as they're concerned, don't have an awful lot of choice other than to pursue the unilateral diplomatic route towards the UN. Uh, and that means certainly that they will produce, put pressure on the International Criminal Court, for example, to increase their um, investigations into his, his Israeli behavior and the um, Israeli forces behavior in, in, in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. So as far as they're concerned, Palestinian Authority, nothing has changed. Really, you know, Netanyahu coming out with the statements that he did, it was really a confirmation, really, of what they thought already. So, um, uh, so in one sense, it doesn't change, but in another, it lives, it gives them a sort of opportunity to, or in justification, in fact, to, to pursue the policy that they've been pursuing of unilateral engagement at the UN. The Israeli occupation authorities have blocked the access of four European parliamentarians into the Gaza Strip via the Beit Hanun border crossing. Uh, the European MPs were expected to enter Gaza to assess the aftermaths of the latest Israeli offensive on the blockade imposed on the Gaza Strip. What is Israel trying to hide? I don't know whether it's trying to hide anything. I think the reporting of what's happened has been fairly comprehensive uh, in terms of destruction that was carried out last year. Um, but really, you know, any kind of foreign reporting, any kind of... Um, Diplomatic recognition, or however implicit diplomatic representation towards Gaza, is viewed by Israel as um, somehow legitimizing uh, both, particularly Hamas in the Gaza Strip, but also legitimizing the Palestinian struggle, if you like, and the wider armed struggle against uh, against the occupation. Um, 
the occupation of the West Bank. So the Israelis have, this isn't the first time that they've, they've blocked people from EU, EU uh, MEPs and, uh, and other such diplomats. It isn't the first time they've blocked them from entering Gaza. But as I say, it's really because they are anxious not to have these seemingly high-level or sort of mid-level diplomatic representations being made towards Hamas, mm-hmm. as they mm-hmm. say, that uh, yes. uh, implies some form of legitimization of Hamas's rule of, of Gaza Strip, which, of course, they don't agree with. So. An EU report on Jerusalem warns that the city has reached a dangerous boiling point of mm-hmm. polarization and mm-hmm. violence, not seen since mm-hmm. the, uh, the second Intifada in 2005, mm-hmm. calling for mm-hmm. tougher European sanctions against Israel over its continued settlement construction. Uh, What is the situation on the ground, David? It is a very tense situation. That isn't because of the election. I think there's been a lot of uh, problems that have been building over the the previous six months. Uh, You know, there there is a lot of hopelessness in the Palestinian circles in in East Jerusalem and throughout the West Bank. There isn't a peace process for which they can see any kind of hope in terms of establishing a state and being able to move forward economically. Mm-hmm. The Israeli attitude towards uh, the Palestinians in terms of withholding tax revenues, which is what they did last year, and the inability mm-hmm. of the government, as I mentioned earlier, to, to pay salaries, to pay um, the government wages, mm-hmm. um, is really having a, a very bad impact. And, and if you couple all this together with the generally tense situation throughout the Middle East at the moment in terms of um, Daesh, and you have the mm-hmm. situation in Syria and Iraq, and it's that isn't mm-hmm. to say that the Daesh is establishing any kind of uh, foothold in the West Bank. There just simply isn't that um, that dynamic there. But the more that um, the lack of peace process draws on, then the lack of activity in terms of if the Palestinians do not see any kind of movement towards statehood then it will become more volatile. And I think you will be able, you will see more uh, outbreaks of violence in, in Jerusalem. It may, it, does, it may lead to, to more uh, generalized outbreak. Whether you call that a third intifada, I don't know. But I think if there is a breakdown, I think in communication and cooperation, the total breakdown that is between the Palestinian Authority and Israel, then the situation will become much more dangerous. And I think the situation then becomes much more, you know, mm. the conditions may well exist then for another intifada. David, what about the humanitarian situation on the ground in the Gaza Strip? Mm-hmm. Well, it's very bad, of course, and the fighting of last year has mm-hmm. brought an awful lot of chaos in terms of no power, no electricity, uh, a lack of, constru- you know, houses destroyed, schools destroyed, um, all those sort of municipal buildings destroyed. Uh, and it's doubtful that many of the, the, the much of the building work in fact, it's, it's unlikely that any of the building work from the previous conflict had had been carried out. So, you know, you've you've had now effectively two rounds of fighting between Hamas and, and Israel, where you know there's been a lack of total lack almost of of construction activity to try and rebuild the, the situation, um, even the basic community situation in, in Gaza. Uh, it is very bad, and the problem that Hamas is also facing at the moment is that uh, it has a very um, tense relationship with the Egyptians and uh, because of Hamas's support for the Muslim Brotherhood uh, and obviously now you have a, a military leadership back in place in Egypt um, mm. which is very, very anti-Muslim Brotherhood um, and so Hamas is paying for that relationship it had with Matt, with Muslim Brotherhood and the yes. Egyptians are taking a very hard line with Hamas at the moment so they are, you know, operating, they are restricting the amount of traffic that goes in and out of the Gaza Strip as much, almost as much as the Israelis are. So so Hamas is under real pressure and, and physically isn't able to begin reconstructing Gaza. Um, now, that, it's say that's partly because of Israeli policy, but partly because of the actions and consequences of Hamas's own policy. What is the role and responsibility of the international community to resolve the conflict? Well, it's, it's, it's difficult to know what they can do. Uh, the Israelis really, in terms of the Palestinian initiative, the Israelis really only listen to, to one partner, and that's the Americans, the, the United States. Um, but as we know, the relationship between Israel and, and the U.S. Is, is not good at the moment. So there may well be, I think, what people are looking forward to in the, the latter part of, or the next part of this year is whether there's, an, a, a, on the U.N. side, whether how far the, the Palestinian Authority is able to, to progress in terms of 
its legitimisation campaign in the UN. But I think there are other bigger issues as well in terms of what steps the Security Council might take. Um, and here we're perhaps looking at... Um, there has been talk of a, of a French-sponsored resolution which would lay out outline of, of a mm-hmm. peace agreement between the, uh, between the Israelis and the Palestinians, which uh, that is something, of course, that Israel does not want to happen because that would place an enormous amount of pressure on, on it to come to, a, to an accommodation. Uh, there's also talk at, these, at the UN of, of, of a resolution condemning Israeli settlement activity. Now, what's interesting, I think, in, in the, the outcome of the election... Um, is that the U.S. may not be willing to veto that, um, given the poor relationship between Israel and the U.S., Obama and Netanyahu particularly. Um, you know, the, the U.S. may be looking to, to punish Netanyahu somewhat for the statements that he's made and not blocking or not vetoing a U.N. resolution criticizing Israeli settlement activity or even, you know, it, a more unlike, that would be a way of doing it. Another, unlike, another way of doing it, perhaps a little bit more unlikely, would be to, for U.S. to cooperate with the French-sponsored resolution outlining the peace treaty, that peace agreement. That would be a bigger step forward and more serious in terms of the Israeli uh, U.S. relationship. So there are a number of issues, I think, that are coming up later in the year that I think that the international community will be paying attention to, and it will be interesting to see how those develop, because then mm-hmm. that will uh, map out the future of the Israeli relationship with the U.S. and Israel's relationship with the Palestinians going forward. Well, David, the last question. How do you see the development of the conflict for the year ahead? The diplomatic efforts I just mentioned will have some yeah. bearing on, on what's going to happen, I think. Um but really, it's, um, I think that the, the Palestinians, I think, will wait to, to see the shape of the government that emerges in, in Israel. Um, they're not expecting it. They're expecting it to be a, a hard-line government. Right. Um, and so, you know, from their point of view, not a lot will change. And I think the choice the Palestinian Authority, I think, is going to have to make in terms of, in terms of the conflict, in terms of, of violence on the ground, will be you know, how far it went, if... And when it ceases security cooperation with the Israelis, which would be a very serious uh, issue, because then the Israelis would then have to uh, assume full responsibility, security responsibility for the West Bank, which would yes. mean a lot more troops going in and a lot more tension. Uh, that would that is not what Israel wants. So the Palestinians are hoping, of course, to 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 use the threat of that to bring the Israelis to to get the Israelis to be more accommodating. Um, so that's one issue. The, the other issue, of course, is the, the, the issue we've already talked about, is the, the hopelessness and the, the, the tension that is already bubbling under within a uh, Palestinian society. And if they don't see any pro- any movement, either progress or even, you know, uh, yes. regression, you know, then that will very much map out how, how the conflict progresses in the future. David Hartwell, director and managing editor of the Middle East Insider and an independent political risk and international security consultant, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much.